Hi friends! Digital multimeter is the most important tool for any radio amateur. Multimeters are different with their accuracy class, functionality, size, and of course price. As a rule, beginners use budget multimeters which have low accuracy. But they are popular as they are cheap and can provide almost all of the necessary measurements. Today we will consider some simple additions or gadgets to the multimeter which will expand its functionality. And the first is a temperature meter or thermometer. Not all multimeters can measure a temperature, but you can make addition yourself. The LM35 chip is a rather high precision temperature sensor often used in Arduino projects. You can purchase this and other electronic components on the LCSC website. This is the largest supplier of electronic components directly from manufacturers. The company works with numerous popular brands, including those with a worldwide reputation. In the company's huge warehouses, there is a dizzying choice of electronic components and finished products, models and kit sets. Convenient payment system and a variety of delivery methods are available. Only original components directly from manufacturers at affordable prices. Link is in the description. This integrated circuit has the simplest connection, just power pins and output. The range of supply voltages is from 4 to 30 volts. The output voltage of the microcircuit changes by 10 mV with every 1 degree Celsius. That is, in such connection, 200 mV at the output will mean that the ambient temperature is 20 degrees. Even a simple, cheap multimeter has measuring ranges of 200 and 2000 mV. Both modes are perfect for our purposes. This addition is powered by a separate 9V battery 6F22. At the output of the chip is a voltage divider, which is a trimming multi-turn resistor for 100 kilo ohm. We must collect everything according to the circuit. Then we take the reference thermometer and turn it on. It now shows room temperature. Now we turn on our multimeter on measurement range of 200 mV and rotate the trimmer until we see the same value on the screen. This completes the setup. The microcircuit itself is a temperature sensor and, if necessary, its outputs can be extended with wires. It's desirable to fix the adjusting screw on the trimmer, for example with hot melt glue. It's worth to say that cheap multimeters usually have a large error range, so our thermometer is far from accurate, but it's quite suitable for domestic needs. The second circuit is also useful. It's a field detector. In one of my videos, I showed an analog version of such a detector. A link to that video will be in the description. In a few words, such an addition makes it possible to convert high-frequency radiation into direct current to estimate the power of radio transmitters. Simply bring the radio transmitter antenna to the detector antenna, turn on, and the multimeter will show some digit. This is a constant voltage from your transmitter. The more powerful signal from the transmitter induces higher readings on the multimeter. Naturally, these digits mean nothing and the device itself will allow only visual control. But it is quite possible to estimate the power and compare different transmitters to one another, as well as to find sources of electromagnetic radiation. The detector is assembled on the basis of one germanium diode of the old type and few other details. An antenna is a piece of copper wire with a length of 5 to 7 cm and a diameter of 1 mm. The device doesn't need an additional power source, which makes it very compact. Connect it to the middle and lower socket of the multimeter. Almost everybody knows how to check the Zinier diet. It requires a power source, a limiting resistor and a multimeter. But the laboratory power source isn't always at hand. So our next device allows you to identify the stabilizing voltage of the Zinier diet and, in general, test it for openability. For its operation, an additional power source is needed. It could be a regular 1.5V battery or a 1.2V accumulator. In principle, the form factor of the battery isn't important. The circuit is very simple and doesn't contain rare components. Built on just a pair of transistors, this is a boost voltage converter. 
The input voltage is supplied from the battery and the output is about 30 volts. It all depends on the inductance value. The current consumption of the circuit is meter, about 10 to 20 mA. The tested Zener diode is connected to the output of the converter through the current limiting resistor. Multimeter probes are connected in parallel to Zener diode. It simply measures the voltage on diode. The choke is wound on a ferry dumbbell. I cannot specify exact dimensions, but they aren't critical. My choke is wound with a wire of 0.15 mm and consists of 150 turns. In this case, the self-induction voltage from the choke reaches to 40 volts and will increase up to the breakdown of the dielectric layer of the capacitor. To prevent this, a load resistor is connected to the output of the converter. For convenience of checking the Zener diode, a piece of the panel for microchips was added to the construction. It's important during the test not to confuse the polarity of the connection of the Zener diode, otherwise it will be in the role of a usual diode. But even in this case it will not be damaged because we have a current limiting resistor. The circuit is assembled on a small segment of the breadboard. But if you want to repeat it, better to do it on a printed circuit board. PCB can be downloaded together with the archive of the project under the video. If you like this video, the second part will come out with more interesting additions for a usual multimeter. So don't forget to rate this video and contact our group if you have any questions. All necessary links are in the description. Now I have to say goodbye until we meet again with you was Kassian TV.